Today's episode is sponsored by Carl's Bait and Tackle. <laughs> cool. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it is Weston Smith along with Devin Smith down here in like the San Antonio area. Yeah, we're normally up in Dallas, but hey, we are visiting a private water fishing property down south here, and we're looking at the boat ramp. All the lakes down here in this area are extremely low, and you'll notice I've been walking on what is the ramp for already about 20 plus feet, 30 feet and uh it looks like right here this is my first impressions is where the ramp ends so <laughs> you'd normally be way in the water already but it's looking like we might have to use the on-site john boat which is no problem at all we'll get out here and see if we can catch some fish at this beautiful location here in southern texas uh, i see frogs right here on the surface oh my goodness top water could be a thing clarity looks phenomenal and loads of grass i'm seeing some riprap over there but it's almost like it's above the water so that you're not having too much opportunity to fish that rock like you might normally be able to and rip some crankbaits by it what else we got over here it opens up to see if we got some potential for big bass catching on this side this lake was electro shocked by the pwf team and uh, there was some giants shocked up here y'all uh, as well as some smaller fish and not much in between it says in the in the report for this property So what that means is we're either gonna catch some small ones or we're gonna get right to the bigs look at this like floating dock <laughs> It is no longer even on the water <laughs> That's what they're going through down here in southern Texas right now But I'm sure these levels are gonna increase throughout the year and uh, they'll be back to normal with that being said We're gonna see if there's a way to get in here and fish this thing. We did bring the hot tamale, our bass boat, down from Dallas. We fished Lake Austin while we've been down here in a couple other places. So we have it in tow, but we're not gonna be able to launch it. So let's see if we can get this John boat in the water and uh, catch us some fish. It is so slushy right there, I almost fell in. So Devin is pulling the John boat over here by the ramp. I'm gonna wheel the truck down a little bit closer for our gear, and we're gonna load this thing up right off the ramp and take off. Here we go, I think. Look at all these little fish. Dang, a nice little ginterrail in here. Saw a little guy. I might break out the Grass Hero swim jig. Time yeah. to fish. A bite. Was it right on the grass edge? Yeah, but they're hitting, um, they're still hitting top water over here. I'm gonna tie on a frog. Mm -hmm. We're seeing these bass blow up all around here on the grass edge, and it could very easily be some small bluegill too, but I'm about to tie on the mini filthy frog because I think just about anything will blow up on this. I'm choosing the mini because the larger size popping frogs, look at this, just a little bit more finesse when you drop down in size it's still got that nice light belly that i like for the clear water and i'm choosing walking instead of popping as well because this uh this right here is going to make a big splash and they might be all about that this morning but i'm thinking with how calm it is something nice and subtle just walking right there on that grass edge is really going to fire them up so Well, we threw the frog, y'all. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Oh, Devin's on. Weightless Sanko. Oh, my gosh. Oh. First. Nice. First fish. First fish. <laughs> First fish at Dog Lake Ranch. First. Very nice. Yeah, it says to cull the little fishies. Yeah. Yeah, we need to make, the, uh, make sure the fishing is pristine for everybody. So any fish 14 inches and below, you are supposed to remove from the lake. So we're going to get this guy out of here. We're just kind of fan casting out deep now, y'all. And it seems like there's probably eight feet until you start hitting some grass. What that means is, oh, in fact, I see some grass right here, just a couple feet below the surface. So it's so varied. We don't have any electronics on the John boat this morning. Shame on us for not being able to launch the big bass boat. It looks so good over there on the ramp. <laughs> but it is what it is. Everywhere in San Antonio is experiencing this right now. We've heard different lakes and, and, and uh, the creeks, just all of it. 
is very low right now. So we're just working this lake slowly. We're letting the John boat take us wherever it wants since we've hit the areas that we thought right off the bat looked good. And there was just a big storm down here yesterday. And with that, maybe the fish are a little turned off and they're just down in the grass, kind of not super interested in eating today. So what we're gonna have to do is make it easy on them and not go crazy with some moving baits, but most likely just fish these bottom baits until we get a couple good hits. There we go. Oh, you got rid of my worm, bud. So you went in the boat, a little bigger. Gosh darn. All right, bud, you get to stay in the water. You make the cut of the 14 inch mark. Slow fishing when they're going after the weightless Sanko. All right, y'all, Devin's catching them all on the slow stuff. So I'm breaking out the jerk bait. This thing's suspending. So you just give it a few good pops and then it just literally sits in that same, when it, when it says suspending, it stays in the same depth. So it doesn't really float up to the surface. It's pretty cool. So with these jerk baits, you can, really get them out there i crank it a little bit sometimes just to get it diving down to those couple feet that it's rated to and then you just want to pop it pretty aggressively on some slack line reel in that slack a little bit so you'll feel any bites just let it sit these fish are uh, a lot slower today but they'll come over and hit a jerk bait after a few aggressive pops just to kind of stir them up and then that thing's just sitting there and begging to be eaten i'm just throwing it on some lighter 10 pound fluoro and that light casting twitch rod uh, with the bfs corrado so with all that being said if i catch something that's a few pounds it's going to be tough to even get like a three plus pounder to the boat on this lighter setup right here just because they have such an opportunity to take us down into this thick grass and uh, potentially break us off so there we go Golly, you are going crazy on the Sanko. That one's a little bit bigger, maybe? Yeah. Okay, we're definitely crushing on the worm. This part right here just looks too froggy again to not throw up for a second. So I'm just going to work through this thing. We have found some fish, guys. This is that six inch lunker log in that watermelon red flake color. Paired up with a four aught hammer hook. No weight. Bye. Usually when you think weightless worm, you think wacky rig. Well, there's so much thick, goopy grass in this property that I really don't want to have an exposed hook. So that is exactly why I'm throwing it on this hammer hook because just like a Texas rig, I can literally expose that hook back into the body. And there we have it. I'm just going through the grass like nothing. I'm completely weedless. I guess I need to do that too, because I don't know what the F going on. I'm throwing all the good stuff in the good places. Oh, I just got hit. Dang. I think I'm going to tie on a weightless worm too, y'all. This is getting annoying right here. <laughs> so to be fair, this is the first time this has happened. I just made a bad cast and kind of went into that goopy stuff, but you know. Oh my gosh, four pounder, right here. Look at him, where'd he go? He's right here, there he is, there he is. See him, see him? Look, he's by the surface, he's coming up to the surface. No way you catch him. That was like easily a four. All right, y'all, absolutely beautiful property. We were just on a time crunch today, so we had like two hours to fish this place. We now gotta go check out of our hotel and get back to Dallas. So we're gonna try and uh, either hit a lake or some uh, some other water in today's episode. But three fish out here on this private water fishing location, just uh, 60 minutes from San Antonio, if that. Uh, I'll leave all the information down in the description. Let us get everything loaded up and we'll catch you guys back up in the city. Today, Devin and I get out on the John boat. Welcome back to the channel, by the way. We just do a little bit of trash fishing. We kind of grab anything out of the tackle box. Hopefully, y'all can learn something from tonight's video. It's a little slower pace. We just have a couple hours to fish before this beautiful sunset in Dallas, Texas. I'm gonna let this big and go. You'll get to see this catch during today's video, but we catch quite a few more bottom baits, moving baits, top water baits. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna let Big Bertha go. One of the bigger catches of the evening. flip for us. Oh. <laughs> Not a bad way to start a video, you guys. Let's crank them. There we go. Got one. There we go. First one on the worm. Heck yeah. There's the first one on the XO ribbon, y'all. Oh. Got him. Could be good. Oh, my drag. There we go. This one might be good, babe. 
You got that net? These are treble hooks. Might lose them. Hold on. It's not gonna work. Nice. There we go. Oh, good one. Got one on the crank. That one's not bad at all. Ooh, wow. Good one on the crankbait, y'all. Oh, he unhooked himself. Right. Well, that's interesting. That's probably two and a half to three pounds or so. That was on a, uh, a Carl's crank. I think this is like a six to nine foot diver, just kind of throwing it in the trees and uh, got lucky with a good one. Let's get him back in the water. Sweet. Oh, tree. <laughs> if you feel like you got a tree, you got to give your crankbait some slack and sometimes it'll unpen itself and start floating back up to the surface. And that was not the case this time. So I'm gonna float on over here and try and dip my rod tip down and get it while Devin fishes the trees. But always just kind of lean into those crankbait bites. And if you know it's not a bass right off the bat, then just kind of give it some slack. That way you're not just burying those treble hooks into a tree even deeper and really not gonna be able to save the bait then. Yeah, that crank is gone. Oh, okay, well, go on with that crankbait. Let's try another. Shallow diver's probably okay anyways. Oh, it floated up. Yeah, saved. Yo, Devin saved the day. See, you want to know what happened? I didn't pin it into that tree. Are my hooks bent out? Dang, they look good. So that square, I don't know what happened. Anyways, maybe I was meant to throw this crankbait. Someone is telling me I need to be throwing this. By the way, I think this is called the shiver crank, y'all, or maybe it's the deep shiver crank. Um, I'm trying to think exactly which model it is. I'm pretty sure it's like a six to nine foot diver. You can see I got my line loose from that last bird's nest. So I'm gonna try and do a little maintenance cast as I call it. There we go. Now that line's gonna be getting back on the spool nice and tight and it won't affect those next few casts. Sometimes you try and do what I just did and that bird's nest is a little too thick and it just doesn't cast. But at least now you've got some line out there and you can kind of work it out. This time it worked in my favor, so. Oh, nice. <laughs> all right, all right. That was, it, they've been hitting like as soon as it lands, it seems like. Nice one. Oh, he choked it. Oh, wow. Devin got one on the dark sleeper now in yeah. a random color. Show him that color because I, I don't really throw colors. it. It's her favorite. God, he like devoured it. That, that guy is gone. <laughs> funny. See you, bud. <laughs> um, let me see that color. Yeah, it's look like at this color. it's like a black fin with yellow and then red. I mean, it's all kinds of madness, but they they eat it. I like it. It's one of my favorite colors. It stands out with that black and red. Got that little flash from the gold. Oh yeah. Yep, yep. Dark sleepers. I think that's a three quarter ounce. Maybe it's a half ounce. We like throwing the heavier ones. Um, I forgot I was just throwing a frog. I thought I just cast out the chatterbait, so I was like letting it sink, and it wasn't gonna sink. <laughs> Anyway, I forget how much those are, but they're probably like eight bucks or something. They're not like super cheap, but oh, 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 that one might be bigger. Oh, it's bigger. I don't know if it's huge or not, but we do have a net here, so. <sighs> not bad at all. Good one. That one's probably three and a half. Good one. That uh, little goby has got their attention tonight. <laughs> And I see something that happens with these baits that I do want to shout out because some people oh, yeah. say like they're pretty expensive for what happens and you'll notice the weight came out of the nose. That's kind of typical with these. It happens quite frequently. So I think we'll be able to push it back up on there, but that bass just choked it. It's a little skinny. So maybe it's 2.75 to three pounds, but filled out, this thing would definitely be three and a half pounds. Look at how skinny it is, but it's got good length. Was that well, the, was that, next cast? that was literally next cast. Yeah, they're smashing the old, uh, what did I just call that thing? Dark sleeper. That's like definitely one of her confidence baits for sure. It's been a while since I've thrown it. Yeah. We're just throwing all kinds of different stuff for y'all tonight. Just uh, going out on a whim, grabbing all kinds of different tackle bags and boxes you can see, and uh, trying to catch a few fish for you before sunset. We might throw some more top water here in a bit. I'm tossing around the clickbait, which is fairly similar to what she's doing, just a smaller swim and bait fish profile. So maybe we can link up with a few more. Oh my god, it broke me off. Oh no. Fish. Ooh. Caught a few, didn't check the line probably. It's all good. Later, as soon as that fish hit and I like went to set the hook, it just went boop. Mm. Just check your line and see if you need to break off a little bit more. Got him. Oh wow. Oh, wow. There we go. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's a good one too. 
<laughs> All right. That's a nice one. Calm down. Oh, that almost hit you in the face. Oh my gosh. That's probably a three and a half right there, a big boy. One of the bigger catches of the evening. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to thank Carl's Bait and Tackle for sponsoring today's episode. Everything Devin and I are throwing today can be purchased from Carl's Bait and Tackle. I believe they've got everything from the rods, definitely all the Guggen baits and everything in between. So be sure to check it out. You can actually make your first purchase of 25 bucks or more and save $10 with code Weston10. We're going to get a few more casts out here. But uh, yeah, we're almost done for the evening, y'all. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace. <laughs>